All right, so when we're working with black paper, there's a few things that are different than with um, white paper or light paper. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our practice wormy guy on our page with a white colored pencil. So I'm gonna make my eye shape anywhere on the worm is fine. Um, I kind of make it in the middle. So I'm gonna almost like a football or an eye. The important thing you wanna keep in mind though is that now every line above this one curves the same direction. We don't wanna change them. And then every line below this one curves the same direction. And that's gonna give you that like tube 3D effect. You can change the um, distance between the lines. You can make skinny ones. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Okay. The more bend you have in your line, the more dimension you're going to get. So you want to keep those lines nice and curved. You don't want to make them straight. So once we have our worm created, we need um, two additional colors. We need a dark and we need a medium and our white is going to serve as our highlight. So I have a dark green here and a light green. Okay. Um, I can use any two colors as long as they're next to each other on the wheel. So if I want to do green to blue, I can do a dark green and a lighter blue. That would blend too. Or I could do a dark red and like a medium orange. That would work. I'm going to turn my worm this way because for me it's easier. I want to shade the direction of my curve. That's going to keep it nice and curved. If I shade opposite, it's going to flatten my image and I want that illusion of form. So you're gonna have to um, lay down quite a bit of color here to make it pop on the black paper, but you don't wanna push hard yet. Okay, you still wanna create those nice light layers. I like to do like these like mini ovals, and then I don't wanna go all the way into the middle because I wanna leave some room for my light color. So I'm gonna pick up my light color or lighter color, I should say. And I'm not gonna go to the edge, but I am overlapping, because I wanna blend these two together. I want them to look like, um, like an ombre, okay? And as I get closer to the middle, I'm going to pick up my pencil pressure and barely push. I just want a light layer there. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So you're starting to get that blend where it's fading from one color to the next. You don't wanna see a start and a stop because that's also going to flatter image. You want a nice blend. And then I am going to go back and do the same thing again. And the more layers you have, the brighter your color is going to be. And that's really important because if you don't add enough layers, you're not going to see the color on black paper. So you really want to make sure you're seeing all of that color. Okay. Um, and because colored pencils are made out of wax, if you push too hard to start, you're gonna fill up that surface of the paper and you're not gonna be able to add any more. So then you're going to um, limit your blending ability. You're not gonna be able to blend colors together. You're gonna to see like a definition between your, your colors. I normally do three to four layers or so, depending on my color combination. Okay, um, but that's pretty bright. So I'm gonna go ahead and then in the middle here, I'm going to pop in that white highlight. That white highlight just goes down the middle, okay? The same layering technique that I did before, but now I need to go back with my middle color and kind of blend that edge together so it's not so defined. Okay, and I'm gonna go back with my white. So this isn't a, a fast process, but I promise it pays off in the end. It'll look really cool. So if you can see the black of the paper, see how I can kind of see the black of the paper through here? I need more layers there. I don't want to see the black of the paper. I want to see just my color blending. So that's kind of a good indicator of whether or not you have enough on your paper, is if you can see the black. If you can't see the black, then you are golden. And just lots of blending back and forth. So now I kind of have that bend and you can see it looks like it's bending and it's got a highlight in the middle. Now all of these stripes can be different color combinations. You don't have to stick with green for the whole worm. It does not matter. The only thing you have to think about is that your dark and your medium colors need to be next to each other on the wheel. Okay. 
okay? Um, so let me show you what happens if you don't blend. This is what we don't want. And I'll show you what opposite strokes do. I get a lot of this. This, this is what I see a lot, okay? And I'm pushing hard from the beginning. So I want you to see the difference. And if you push hard from the beginning, you're not gonna get that fade. I'm doing this fast, but you get the idea. You're just gonna see stripes. And that's gonna defeat our purpose because our purpose is to create that illusion of form. But this is the, the most common technique that I see people try. And that's not gonna give us the effect that we want. Do you see the difference between these two? Okay, so we wanna keep our strokes going the direction of our curve and you want to blend before you put too much pressure on.